Good morning. How are you this uh, wonderful Tuesday? You are right on time. It is exactly 6 a.m. and you're watching AM Live. My name is Zenobis Smile. Of course, you can also watch us on our website live at ntvkenya.co.ke. The engagement this morning, as always, is the hashtag AMLiveNTV at NTV Kenya. You can also ask me at Zenobis Smile. I'd love to hear from you and your thoughts on some of the stories we are going to be lining up for you this morning also on the papers this morning the daily is capturing a number of different stories we're going to be giving you a glimpse of what is captured within the dailies but also a couple of other stories that will be forming the basis of our discussion this morning of course that's stemming from the proposals made by nandi senator samson cheragay with regard to the presidential term limit and its extension from five years the seven years what does it mean what does the constitution uh have to say about that and really is that the time to have this conversation what is the essence behind that what are we trying to cure that is what we're going to be having a look at this morning but before that the ministry of education has reviewed the grading structure for the kenya certificate of secondary education as per the recommendations of the Presidential Working Party on Education Reforms, Education Cabinet Secretary Ezeka Mashogu, while launching the 2023 National Exams Calendar, noted that only two mandatory subjects, that is mathematics and one language, will be used in the new grading system. And to visit Kevin Mutai kicks us off with that story. <laughs> 2023 examination season is in full gear. Structure will be implemented to the 2023 KCSC examination grading system. The only two mandatory subjects will be mathematics and one language, either English language, Kiswahili, or Kenyan sign language. In addition to the two mandatory subjects, the Kenyan National Examination Council will consider another five best uh, performed subjects. This now means that NEC has done away with the previous system where five subjects were mandatory, a method expected to increase the number of candidates qualifying for their upper education. This is part of the recommendations from the Presidential Working Party on Education Reforms, which discredited the 844 system as a disadvantage to the other learners. More than 3.5 million candidates will be sitting their national examinations this year including the Kenya Primary School Education Assessment for Grade 6 learners, the Kenya Certificate of Primary Education, KCPE, and the Kenya Certificate of Secondary Education, KCSE. No supervisor or invigilator is retained in the center they served in during uh, last year's national examinations to ensure annual rotation of staff. I think this is something we had already agreed on, uh, ensure that if uh, there was a supervisor in a certain uh, center, then this year they are not uh, taken back to avoid a, a lot of issues. All our officers, both in the field and at the headquarters, that any one of us who is out on leave, that we resume our official duties until we clear with the examination period. So. There will be no new people going on leave. The ministry also vowing to uphold the integrity of the exams and saying it will allow only the centre managers and their deputies to be at the examination centres during the exercise. Centre managers will ensure that double collection of morning and afternoon session papers is done without compromise to any examination uh, procedures. I know my ministry will ensure that the appropriate action will be taken against officers who contravene the rules and the regulations put in place. The government will not spare any person found to be affecting cheating in examinations. The Teacher Service Commission has also vetted 223 supervisors and invigilators, 37,731 examiners, as well as 71,760 center managers. All of them have been directed to appear in person for all the meetings at the sub-county level and not to delegate their duties. Honorable CS, we wish to assure you that we have vetted these teachers and we have given the best to ensure that all goes well. 
area. The minister says it is adequately resourced to deliver the 2023 national examination that will be supervised for the first time after the COVID-19 disruption of the education calendar. Kevin Mutai, NTV. Meanwhile, proposals have been fronted before the National Dialogue Committee on the Reconstitution of the Independent Electoral Boundaries Commission. The Interreligious Council of Kenya has proposed that the IBC selection panel in place should continue the process of picking new IBC commissioners, but expand the panel to include representatives from the two leading coalitions of the Kenya Kwanzaa Alliance and as the Miola Umoja Coalition of the Political Party's Liaison Committee wants the number of, uh, of course, uh, wants uh, that number of commissioners increased to nine. Well, Melito Letengis has that contact. Our dear father, we are so... The hearings of the memoranda presented by different institutions and members of the public to the National Dialogue Committee on Monday centered on the constitution of the IBC with different groups presenting their proposals on how to cure what has been perennially ailing the electoral body. The Interreligious Council Memoranda, among other issues, proposes that both Azimio and Kenya Kwanzaa should have members appointed to the IBC selection panel, which currently has seven members. We call for an amendment of the first schedule of the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission Act 2011 to expand the selection panel to include one representative each from the two leading political coalitions in Parliament so as to create a good working atmosphere for the selection panel. In regards to the boundary delimitation, the council proposes that the delimitation mandate be taken away from the IBC and be tasked to a different body in order for IBC to focus on organizing the elections only. A different group identifying as Transoia Sabaot Professional Association has called on the National Dialogue Committee to consider issues to do with historical injustice in the past as emotions ran high in the dialogue room. They have proposed the creation of an extra county to be named Mount Elgon County. If you can see, having been divided like that, Part of it being in Bongoma, part of it being in Transoya, we are always the minority. For example, if you look at Transoya County for uh, the, the uh, county assembly, you will find that elected county assembly members are 25, four of which are from Mount Elgon. The political parties liaison committee in their submissions want the audit of the 2022 elections and the political parties act amended to have the liaison committee entrenched in law as an independent body. It is imperative that all the political parties are included in this process of appointing or nominating a commissioner. Other groups that made their submissions include the National Council for Persons Living with Disabilities who called for inclusivity and the National Youth Council who decried the high cost of living. Melita Olitenges, NTV. Meanwhile, the government has embraced a new paradigm shift in the provision of basic health care and medical services to Kenyans by promotion of preventive health care in the country. Our reporter Gabriel Kadaka has the details. For community health promoters play a crucial role in provision of health services, especially at the grassroots level. Someone advised Yulem to buy Mpima. However, a number of them face a myriad of challenges. And today's flagging off of community health promoters' kits at the Uhuru Park grounds and a commitment to offer them a stipend would go a long way in empowering them, especially in the wake of the anticipated El Nino rains. That we are going to partner with them to make sure that our community health promoters have a stipend every month. And we are going to co-share a shilling for a shilling with our county governments 
so that these men and women, the good people who have volunteered their time, energy, and resources to make sure that they visit our homes, we are now going to reward them with a stipend so that they can deliver that service in a manner that is consistent with what we all want for the Republic of Kenya. And therefore, when we are paying for CHPs, we should be able to pay the, C the NHF up front so that we can ensure that this, our CHPs have an health cover that is comprehensive throughout the year, even as we struggle with the stipend. Our hodumu ambao wa kombele yetu na wengine wakiwa katika sehemu mbali mbali za kitaifa wanaidhimisha kwamba tangu tuanze hiyo safari hizi changamoto bado zinatusumbua. The flagging off of our community health promoters kit is the actualization of a cherished vision, a vision that resonates with the ideals of universal health coverage and community well-being. President Ruto said 100,000 community health promoters kits will be provided by the national government through the Ministry of Health together with smartphones to make them reachable. These people are going to play a very critical role in the season we are going, the season of El Nino. El Nino usually comes with a lot of diseases. It also comes with an environment that ensures that uh, the diseases spread at alarming rate. We are launching this an opportune moment when we are expecting them to upscale what they are doing to make sure that we are going to have an El Nino with a difference now that we, that, that we have an army to deal with our disease burden at the primary level. The function was attended by more than 24 governors, among other leaders. Gabriel Kudaka, NTV. Meanwhile, the Environment and Land Court in Machakos heard the land tussle between the Maasai community from Mavoko and the government over 2,912 acres of land in Mavoko constituency. The community claims to be the original owners of the land, accusing the government in cahoots with some private developers of hatching a plot to dislodge them from the land. They say the government of retired President Uhuru Kenyatta brought them a plan to breed a unique brand of sheep and goats with the ability to withstand the harsh drought conditions, which eventually failed. They also allege that the government entities such as the Kenya Defense Forces, the Kenya Wildlife Service and the Kenya Med Commission were given space on the farm without ultimate consultation. Further, they add that private individuals are now providing title deeds to the farm. Judge Christina Cheng said the court will issue its ruling on the 13th of December this year. All right, and with that time to take a look at uh, what's making headlines in the dailies this morning. And we're going to begin with the Daily Nation. This is what you find on the front page of the DN. New KCSC grading boost for students. Of course, this is about the subjects review where this new grading system is set to be implemented from this year and which is set to benefit over 5 million learners. It will reduce the number of compulsory subjects from 5 to 2, which include mathematics and one of the languages. This means more candidates are likely to score better grades and qualify to join tertiary colleges. It's a story on page 7. We're going to get to that in a moment. But also on the front page, I am going nowhere, says Raila Odinga. And he says, and I quote, the day I decide to go back to Bondo, I will not ask for anyone's permission. I will find my way there. Certainly, that time has not yet come. I'm still here, so let them shut up. That is what Raila Odinga had to say. And also just uh, here on the front of the DN as well, suspect in my murder case has been freed. What split? Mount Kenya leaders are united, insists the deputy president. And also... You're on your own. UDA tells Gerard Gay on the issue of term limits. We're going to get to that in a moment. Now let's see what else is covered on the second page. Well, President Ruto sends 100,000 community health workers 
to the counties. You can see uh, the president there greeting uh, some of the community health uh, promoters at Uhuru Park in Nairobi yesterday. That's the picture there. Well, the president uh, flagged off the medical kits for community health promoters in all the 47 counties to be used for primary health care services. He was speaking at that event at Uhuru Park in Nairobi yesterday, saying the 100,000 CHPs will transform health care at the grassroots and Kenyans will no longer have to visit hospitals for screening services. Of course, loading that particular program, which will be jointly implemented by the national government and all the county governments as well. Let's see what else we have, okay? And uh, this is what was also captured on the front page. Suspect in Maigo's murder case released due to lack of evidence. Uh, it's a story that has suddenly gripped the nation since uh, we got the information. Of course, a court has now released a woman who was arrested in connection with the murder of Nairobi Hospital Finance Director Eric Maigo after detectives failed to provide evidence linking her to the crime. Cynthia Lusenga Andayo, also known as Flora Koth, who was carrying a baby in the dock, walked free after police told Milimani Senior Principal Magistrate Bernardo Chol that they had found no evidence linking the suspect to the heinous and brutal murder, uh, brutal murder of Maiga. But also, last week, mainstream and social media was awash with photos of a suspected killer scaling the victim's home perimeter wall after landing on the other side. The suspect was seen walking away covering her face with a hood, and now the police have launched a manhunt for that particular suspect as well. Also, Preacher faces congregations wrath after deducting tithe from hospital cash bill. This is happening in Tanariva County, where this preacher was forced to flee during a church service as a congregation attacked him for retaining a percentage of money that had been raised to settle a member's hospital bill. Well, you can read that on the third page of the DN as well. Meanwhile, I'm not in a hurry to retire, says Raila Odinga on political future. As says Mila Omojo and Kenya uh, party leader Raila Odinga's statement uh, that he will not be leaving the political scene anytime soon. He has left more questions than answers about his next move. And this is amid discussions um, about his succession, both in Luanyanza and the national level. And, of course, uh, Odenga dropping that bombshell on political friends and foes alike by saying he's not going anywhere. And this is, you know, appears to be quite a major statement made from his uh, uh, own backyard at a housewarming party uh, that happened, I believe, yesterday or the day before yesterday. He was responding to some calls by some politicians allied from the Kenya Kwanzaa team and, uh, you know, uh, telling him that it is time for him to quit politics. But he says... That is not a decision they have, will be making for him and he will not be leaving active politics anytime soon. So that is what he said. And I quote, the day I decide to go back to Bondo, I will not ask anyone's permission. I will find my way there. Certainly the time has not yet come. I'm still here. So let them shut up. And uh, there you have it. And a lot has been happening and has been uh, said about uh, the same on the political front. Meanwhile, UDA disowns Senator in, term, uh, in the issue of the term limit debate. That's President William Ruto's UDA party, which has thrown Nandi Senator Samson Cheragay under the bus, distancing itself from his proposal to increase presidential term limits. The UDA Secretary General Cleophas Malala saying the debate was uh, different and uh, maintaining that the party's focus was on delivering on its manifesto. Of course, this is coming... Uh, after that a memorandum that was presented before the National Dialogue Committee at the Bombers of Kenya by the Nandi Senator seeking to amend the Constitution to extend the presidential term limit from five to seven years before the next election. Of course, this has drawn a lot of sharp reactions from across the political divide. Some critics terming it a ploy to introduce what they term as a presidents for life in the new future. Well, this uh, uh, is a story I'm going to hold on for uh, just for a moment because we're going to get to that and uh, that's the discussion we'll be having uh, this morning on meanwhile is the issue of mount kenya and the politics surrounding it as well and uh, mount kenya leaders are not divided uh, insists uh, deputy president figadi gashago who has expressed confidence that mount kenya region was solidly 
united behind the Kenya Kwanzaa administration. And he was speaking in Odaya in Nyeri County on Sunday. He denied reports of a split in the region that overwhelmingly voted for President William Ruto in last year's election. Gashago has engaged in a war of words with the Trade Cabinet Secretary Moses Kuria over the high cost of living and his statement that the government was like a company with shareholders. And of course, you have some of the Mount Kenya leaders who campaigned for President Ruto in the region, which are said to be, were said to be unhappy with many of the promises which are now unfulfilled, especially on the issue of the price of farm produce and the high cost of living. So that is what is happening in that part of the country as well. Meanwhile... What does the KCSC subject grading review mean for students? We've talked about that. Oh, so more, about more than 5 million students will benefit from this new grading system in the KCSC exams. Uh, and that will leave out subjects that are not strong at and uh, consider their best grades in the final score. So this new system was announced yesterday by the Secretary of uh, the Cabinet Secretary for Education, Ezekiel Mishogu. Reduces the number of compulsory subjects from five to two. Candidates to mean grades will be calculated based on those two particular compulsory subjects. That's mathematics and one language, either English, Kiswahili, or Kenya Sign Language, and then five other best performed subjects. Remember the previous system considered five compulsory subjects, which included English, Kiswahili, mathematics, and two science subjects, and then uh, two humanities, which then uh, disadvantaged some learners whose best performing subjects were not considered if they did not fall within that stated formula. But also still on education matters, uh, send us free learning cash, demands heads of day schools. That's the Ministry of Education, which has disbursed capitation funds for free day secondary schools. And, uh, you know, almost three weeks after schools reopened, but principals are complaining over the insufficient amounts that have uh, been forced uh, to credit creditors to come at at their institutions, the principals, they did speak to Nation on the condition of anonymity that uh, uh, the money is insufficient to retain the students for another three weeks before schools close for the third term and uh, procuring examination materials for the Kenya Certificate of Secondary Education candidates as well. Let's see what else we have. Then I introduce my panelists who have arrived so far so that we can also take a look at the paper together. And uh, Nasser accuses state leaders of uh, not consulting on uh, port leasing. Of course, it's quite a hot issue in Mombasa at this point. And that's the governor, Abdul Somad uh, Sheriff Nasser, now condemning uh, the Kenya Konza government of its plan to lease key facilities at the port of Mombasa. He has always styled himself as a camp politician. He came out gun blazing, uh, guns blazing and told top government leaders that he is not a pushover on that particular matter. Meanwhile, a Kenyan was arrested in Sri Lanka with four kilos of cocaine. That's a Kenyan who's been arrested uh, at the international airport there in Sri Lanka with four kilograms of cocaine, estimated to be worth about 632 million Kenyan shillings. This is according to local news outlets. This 26-year-old passenger who had arrived from Ethiopia was arrested on Sunday by officers from the Customs Narcotics Control Unit. And of course, Sri Lanka officials did not disclose the suspect's name, but we do understand uh, that it's a uh, Kenyan national at that point. Meanwhile, on the business dailies, it's another headache for employers as, let's see, pay deductions cross two-thirds. All right, so this is another huge issue that we are facing as a country, but allow me to introduce my panelists this morning. I'm joined by Diana Gishengo, National Coordinator at TISA Kenya. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We also do have uh, Brenda Ongalo, Advocate of the High Court. A very good morning. Good to see you, Karibu. As well as Dorcas Moy, Constitutional and Environmental Advocate as well. A very good morning. Good to see you. And thank you for joining us. I'm going to begin with you, Diana. So, if, you know, we'll come, come back to the issue of politics in a moment. But Business Daily Employers' headache as pay deductions cross two-thirds, which means more salaried workers with pre-existing loan repayment obligations have in recent months seen their take-home pay shrink past the legally recommended level after statutory and tax deductions, presenting a compliance headache for employees 
employers and financial institutions. Now, you have the Employment Act of 2007, which prohibits employers from deducting more than two-thirds of the basic pay of an employee to safeguard their rightful gains from employment. But salaried workers have seen a jump in NSSF contributions from 200 to what, more than 1,000 shillings and the start of this 1.5% housing levy deduction on gross pay, cutting their takeaway home pay. And of course, this one now crosses that two-thirds threshold that is there in the Constitution. What, what does this mean for, you know, especially salaried Kenyans who are actually feeling the pinch under this, you know, new salar this new taxing structure by the government? Mm -hmm. um, thank you very much, Zainab. And right there are employers um, coming back to Parliament and raising the fact that Kenyans are simply overtaxed mm -hmm. because by the time um, you have a loan and other deduction get to the level where they exceed two-thirds, and of that to that, I think the last time um, salaried, salaried employees, um, in addition to the 30 percent, mm -hmm. um, when we did the calculations, they, there are some people who are, whose salary is taking away as much as 48 percent right. just in government deduction. Any other loan or any other even pension contribution, um, you have overshot your 66 percent. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't stop there, Zainab. The medium-term revenue strategy proposes to increase taxes mm -hmm. yet again. Mm -hmm. Now, those are salaried employees mm -hmm. those and, and employers who represent a majority of um, Kenyans. Immediately, the new tax measures were proposed. Mm -hmm. The Salaries and Remuneration Commission said they are introducing something to standardize. Mm -hmm. So we are going to see our members of parliament have their salary go up. Mm -hmm. The president declined that his salary should not go up, but there was a proposal for that. People like um, constitutional office holders, judges, mm -hmm. and are saying our salary is secured. If you deduct, you cannot reduce mm -hmm. what I take home. And what is buffering them? The same taxes that we are paying. Mm -hmm. The irony, the paradox, that you can continue oppressing people mm -hmm. into poverty and feeling that it is okay to continue raising all this revenue when you're even going against um, the constitution, mm -hmm. the minute somebody has to live on less than a third, mm -hmm. you're taking away their dignity. Right. Um, and in the in the in the in the recent past, I have been citing an example where um, I visited an office, and um, the woman who is the admin assistant and the cleaner, mm -hmm. immediately the housing levy was introduced she came to the manager mm -hmm. crying that 250 shillings was missing from her salary. Mm -hmm. When she was told this is the housing levy, she mm -hmm. broke down mm -hmm. because she was 100% sure she has no way of finishing that month. Wow. That is exactly so that what it means. That 200 shillings meant a lot? A lot. Right. In her daily planning, her monthly planning. Mm -hmm. That is what we are doing as we plan in abstract Imagining we are just raising measures because oh we borrowed we stole now we must pay. It can't it can't continue like this. Right. A conversation must happen. The revenue raising measures are unsustainable, mm -hmm. and they will just increase inequalities and most probably um, sink more Kenyans into depression. Right. And I mean, Dorcas, you have the uh, executive director and CEO of the Federation of Kenya Employers, Jacqueline Mugo, saying. There is need for government to harmonize these deductions laws. What do we obey? obey? Do we obey the Employment Act or others like for housing, levy and pension? At the end of the day, all these are laws and none supersedes the other except the Constitution. So where does that leave Kenyans at this point? Uh, thank you, Zainab. Uh, we have seen that uh, we have the Employment Act 2007 yes. that prohibits uh, the employers uh, deducting more than uh, two-thirds uh, at least uh, more than two thirds yeah. of the basic salary of the employee. Right. Uh, therefore, these other deductions have come after the enact enactment of the Employment Act. Right. So they are coming in contravention of already an existing law. Mm -hmm. So therefore, where which one do we obey? Mm -hmm. Any other act that is being introduced currently mm -hmm. that is in contravention now with the Employment Act 
to be challenged in court. Mm -hmm. So uh, as long as we are, as long as, as as far as we are concerned, the Employment Act has not been amended. Mm -hmm. There's no bill. There is no amendment introduced in Parliament to amend this Act, mm -hmm. and therefore we should uphold, or the courts should. The, the courts should be approached so that they can uphold the already existing Employment Act. Right. Yeah. Because essentially that's a breach of already substantive, you know, act within the Constitution as well. Correct. But uh, Brenda, what are your thoughts on that as well? Um, my thoughts would be that um, are, are these new deductions being introduced as a matter of, uh, okay, is there a good thought or proper thought process that goes through but through, uh, with the government, even as they seek to introduce all these new new deductions, mm -hmm. because this is a glaring mistake. It's something that the policymakers would have seen. This is something that was so obvious. Um, if you increase, if you introduce the uh, uh, the housing levy, uh, there is also a parliament resuming this week to debate the, an amendment for for the uh, NHIF, which is now the which, Social Health Fund. Bill, yes, which is I supposed believe. to introduce fact, another two point seven. Having that discussion today. Yes. Right. So, um, what is the thought process of our of our policymakers, even as they introduce this? Do they take into consideration existing laws, mm. or do they want a situation where um, you find domestic laws? Uh, conflicting, mm -hmm. then our courts are put in a, uh, in, a, in, a, in a conflict where they do not know which one to uphold and which mm -hmm. one not to uphold. Right. But it's important to note that our Employment Act basically was brought in to protect the human rights, the socioeconomic rights of an employer, mm -hmm. or of an employee. So that uh, gives it maybe a higher backing because it's from a general mm -hmm. um, international human rights perspective, mm -hmm. which should actually be what would carry the day. So even as we seek to introduce more levies in a bid to raise more revenue, in a bid to pay off our loans and all that, can we look at the, what the, uh, the pre-existing uh, legal obligations that are already there and any bars that are there? Indeed. Mm -hmm. All right, let's move away from that. But uh, let me see what else we have here on... East African, just a very quick outlook on uh, that publication for this week. That is Rwanda's president there on the picture, Paul Kagame, who says he will run for a fourth term in 2024 with critics putting, putting him in a club of African big men who cling on to power. The fourth, it says, you can uh, read that particular report on page 10 of the East African publication. And also why Somalia wants admis uh, drawdown halted. And, of course, the African Union mission is leaving a security vacuum that Mogadishu suddenly cannot immediately plug, as well as Ruto Kagame seeking deals with U.S. investors uh, in their respective countries as well. And on Taifa Leo, uh, we still have that story that was captured on the DN. Mzeniwewe, you know, that's what Raila Odinga is saying. Afokea wanautaka astafu na kurudi bondo na wanaolenga kumridhi kisema wakati wake bado. Nani ya namuita mze? Tangazo hilo la kutuacha siyasa na msimamo wake wakuunga mkono mazungumzo ya marithiano wakati ambapo baadhi ya viongozi wazimio wa nataka mungano huu ujiondoe. Limeacha wengi kwa mata. You know, uh, Diana, I'd like perhaps to get you know, your thoughts on, on this. You know, people, there have been calls, you know, uh, for Raila Odinga to to now step aside from active politics and move away from that, allow for the young blood to take over. And, of course, there's this issue of having uh, someone who's going to, you know, lead the Luonyanza region. If Raila Odinga wasn't there or he's retired from politics, mm -hmm. but he says, no, I'm not, I'm not ready. Why are you calling, asking me to go to Bondo? I will go to Bondo when I want to go to Bondo. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Um, I don't know, because um, there, there, there are a number of things that come into play. Mm -hmm. One, um, it is um, the right honorable prime minister's democratic right to right. continue wanting to be a voter and even wanting to vie for presidency. Yeah. And we cannot um, coerce him. But they, they are not, he's, he's vied and he's been in the political leadership for a very, very long time. Mm -hmm. um, in a sense, and part of the discussion that I believe we will have today is the fact that um, if we didn't have a presidential system, most probably 
even if he had lost election, he would be year in, year out in parliament. Right. Um, under a parliamentary system, um, leading the opposition and so on. He occupies such a significant space in um, Kenyan politics right. that I honestly feel that we, sh we should be allowing more room um, for, for, for new leadership, for intergenerational mentorship. Mm -hmm. But Zainab, I am guided that leadership and power is never given. Mm -hmm. So I think it's time for people, whether from Nyanza, all the areas that support the Right Honorable, um, the Raila Odinga, and other Kenyans to emerge and just seize the space. That is the only way that uh, we will either have a new, um, not a two-horse race, we will have new energy, mm -hmm. um, a, a different type of thinking, young leaders um, taking the mantle of um, leadership. But um, the decision by Raila is a personal one. We cannot um, coerce him. I mean, it's a democratic Right. right. Um, and we must um, respect it for, for that. So I don't think um, so much, unless he gets to the point where he's muzzling other emerging people who mm. want also to, dem to exercise their democratic right, that would be a problem. Mm -hmm. But for him, uh, vying every day, um, your dreams cannot, we cannot extinguish <laughs> his dreams. They are very valid. Right. Um, he can vie again 2027, 20, 2032. Mm. Um, after all, um, if we go to our scriptures and uh, our history, the leaders who are 100 years and they led the people. <laughs> right, so Mzeni. <laughs> but anyway, uh, Wanja Maina, uh, thank you for joining us. National Chairperson Jubilee uh, Party, PWD's League, thank you for joining us this morning. Perhaps your quick thoughts on this? Yes, my quick thoughts. First, good morning, NTV viewers for, from wherever you are. Uh, I would say that when I see such kind of uh, statement from Baba Mzeniwewe, I think I look at the context of those words. It, uh, the words have come from a context of constantly being told to go to Bondo, mm. being told that he will be safirishward uh, up to Bondo. So for me, I see the constant individual attack on him and not necessarily what he represents, mm -hmm. is one of the ways of weakening opposition, mm -hmm. is one of the ways of always trying to take away his credibility and uh, his passion for fighting for people. Mm -hmm. So when they use issues like age, really, uh, I don't see it as an issue, really. Mm -hmm. But I see Baba for what he stands for. I see him for social justice and agitating for the people. Mm -hmm. And that's why... Just as uh, Diana has said, it is within his democratic rights to participate in politics. Mm -hmm. Yes, I mean uh, you have Taifa Leo saying Ilo Tamko, and he thought that statement uh, has left many who wanted to take over that position or Kumridi, kama kigogo wa siasa eneo la nyanza na katika mungano wa zimio hasa baada ya kuashiria kuwa hajachoka kupigania demokrasia nchini imeacha hapo hapo tu. Like they don't know what to do. Is, is that the case, uh, Brenda? Oh, my people have this funny um, statement. Not a funny <laughs> statement, really, but loosely translated to power is taken, power is not given. So you're not because given power. Yeah, you're you not given power. As, 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 as a young person, mm -hmm. as an emerging leader, uh, I think it's an opportunity for somebody to emerge because who gave Raila power? Uh, we did not give him power. Mm -hmm. he, he, he saw an opportunity and took it away. Mm -hmm. So the only challenge here would be um, there's somebody who has near half the country yeah. following him religiously. So I think it's time for a leader to just emerge mm -hmm. without necessarily having calls for uh, Raila to go to Bondo. Mm -hmm. Every time they say that he has this um, habit of reincarnating into something else. And by the time we get to 2026, we will be hearing songs of Raila the Sixth, Baba the Sixth. Yeah. So I think uh, the statement, again, it is his right, just like any other Kenyan. Mm -hmm. uh, the young people or any leaders who want to emerge to be kingpins of a particular uh, location would just should just emerge and convince the people by themselves. Right. If not, um, 
let them do what Raila did or do or just find their own ways of emerging. Nobody right. is really going to tell you, I have given you this, now I'm going to Bondo. Right, there's yeah. no clear path to inheritance <laughs> of power. Dorcas, your thoughts? Um, I mean, if we look at the our, our, our constitution, yeah. Article 137, on qualifications of being a president, is Raila qualified? Yes, he is. There's no age limit on who becomes the president of this nation. And therefore, we should let Raila be. Why are we sending him to Bondo when him himself has not declared himself retired? So let Baba be. Let him exercise his democratic rights. The Bill of Rights applies to him, just like any other Kenyan. And therefore, we should just wait and see. Who knows? Trump became a president when he was uh, 70 years and above. Mm -hmm. So why should we uh, put Raila... Uh, as an exception to that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And I want to just take a, a first break here on AM Live this morning. When we come back, we'll be delving, delving much deeper into our conversation this morning, but also just very quickly on the standard, what is captured. Reading Uhuru's script, it says, a year after taking the reins of power, the Kenya Kwanza government is implementing projects it campaigned against, abate with different names, including the BBI project that's been couched with bipartisan talks. Uh, page uh, page six of uh, the standard newspaper. There are a number of issues there. The Huduma number versus Maisha number. There's the issue of the Prime Minister's office, the BBI bipartisan talks, which way, and also there's the issue of the, the debt management. So uh, that's a story uh, that is cap captured on the front page of uh, this uh, particular paper, uh, the standard, then you can get that. Is it a an about you? About turn on Uhuru projects after political rhetoric? That's the question. And uh, of course, uh, uh, we'll be trying to make sense of that as well. And on the star, also very quickly on the front page, Ruto returns to squabbles and UDA tuffles. Well, Discord pits senior ministry officials and political heavyweights. What is there for the president as he jets back to the infighting within, within his own Party, and then there's also the issue of public outrage on the issue of uh, cost of living and a number of other issues as well. So let's uh, take that quick break. We're going to be back. The hashtag is M Live MTV. All right, welcome back to the program. You are watching AM Live this morning. I'm not alone in studio this morning. I'm joined by Dorcas Mwai, constitutional and environment advocate. Brenda Ongalo, advocate of the High Court. Diana Gishengo, national coordinator. Tisa, as well as Wanja Maina, the national chairperson of the Jubilee Party PWD's League. And of course, we'll be dissecting some of the political developments in the country. One of those issues is this report that was filed by Brian Mushiri, where President William Ruto might end up leading the country for 19 years, but only if uh, Nandi Senator Samson Cheragay's proposal, which is before the National Dialogue Committee, is implemented. The senator is proposing that the current five-year presidential term be extended to seven years, and this pr proposal seems to have received condemnation and support in equal measure. Let's have a look at that report. I, William Samoei Ruto. Since the swearing-in of President William Ruto in September last year, there have been three proposals to have the president's term in office extended from the current five years. The most recent suggestion coming from Nandi Senator Samson Cherarge. Cherarge claims that the five-year term is too short for any president to carry out and efficiently deliver on his mandate. The continuous campaign mood in the country has been occasioned by the perception that elections are held within the short period of five years. In any election period, we lose a whole year in campaigns, and another year is lost immediately after election because of the litigations in the Supreme Court, and thereafter, transition period of new government settling down in the formation of new government, such as cabinet vetting by parliament, and appointment of the same, including senior government officials, in total, we lose two years in a period of five years, leaving only three years 
for a president and new government to work. If the proposal is taken up, it would mean that a president will serve for the first seven years and still go back to the electorate to ask for a second term of seven years, giving a lucky president 14 years in power. However, the ruling party UDA says not so fast. Through a communication by the party's Secretary General Cleophas Malala, the party has distanced itself from the matter saying, and I quote, The UDA party has been drawn to various news headlines and media references to a memorandum submitted to the bipartisan talks team by Senator Samson Chirarke, particularly on his proposal to increase the presidential term limit to seven years. The UDA party respects and upholds the senator's personal views, but those views do not reflect the perspectives of the UDA party or its party leader, His Excellency the President William Ruto. End quote. Gerard Gay has, however, defended his position. I respect the opinion of everybody. I have seen the opinions of Kenyans who are dissenting, and that is the beauty of democracy. And uh, I hope the National Dialogue Committee will not be swayed uh, uh, by these pedestrian remarks by even leaders and, uh, and Kenyans. The matter receiving strong criticism from opposition legislators. Nataka kuambia Chararigei, Senator Chararigei leo, Senator Wanani. Iyo manana ya kuchezo na term limit ya president. Atu ufikirie ruto atatutawala miaka ingine kumina ine, sahau. Patuwezi kurudi nyuma kwa katiba ya siku za moi. Mutu ni miaka yako tano, unakuja unaomba ingine, wanainji wakikubali kukupatia ingine tano, that is over. It should however be noted that this is not the first time legislators affiliated to Kenya Kwanza have made the proposal. Last year in November, Fafi member of parliament Salah Yakub was the first to propose the bill, with President William Ruto downplaying the matter and urging the lawmakers to take it slow. Will Chirarge's push be successful? Brian Mushiri, NTV, Nairobi. All right, and of course uh, the senator says that uh, he will not be cowed even in the midst of the fact that UDA has already dismissed that term limit bid uh, for the presidency. But let me begin with Wanja Maina. Your initial thoughts on that particular matter. It's not the first time yeah. we've had this. I remember early in the year there's that uh, proposal still stemming from one of uh, the members. I think that's the five member of parliament still on the issue of extending the term limit. Now the reasoning behind Samson Cherage's uh, proposal says, look, when you have a president who takes over power, the first two years already you know, lost in trying to create a government, you know, have cabinet secretaries in place and all these things. So then he's left with three years, which is really not enough for the president to, uh, you know, really do what he promised he will do, you know. So your thoughts on that? Okay, right. Um, I, when I watch Senator Cheryl Gay speaking about that matter, I don't know, I was a bit uh, abstracted by his sunglasses. <laughs> uh, but that's really beside the point. I think one of the sadness that I get from the very beginning mm -hmm. is just to look at Senator Cheryl Gay as a youthful senator, mm -hmm. barely, you know, in his youthful years. And these are the kind of legislations that they are presenting uh, in a country where young people have always been associated, young leaders have been associated with a new way of thinking, mm -hmm. with innovation. Uh, one of the speakers whom we have watched just a few seconds ago has said that we cannot go back to more errors mm -hmm. uh, and at least even if they want us to go back to the era of Moi, they should at least remember that we have a new constitution mm -hmm. that um, the constitution the constitution that Moi had they don't have the privilege of that old constitution that said governments are continuous you see when you say that uh, when a president comes, he doesn't have a lot of time to finish. You know, you pick from where the person, from where the person who came before you left it at. Mm -hmm. It is not that you are starting afresh. It's not that you are creating a new country. It's not like you are creating new departments. It is a, a, a wheel that keeps moving. So if really you say that five years is not a long time, seven years is a long time, uh, even if you are given 10 years, if you are a poor leader, if you are not able to put your house together, 
if you are not able to appreciate the moving parts of a government and the stakeholders, it will even take you 20 years and you will still not have performed. And in any case, uh, when people are campaigning for these positions, they even say what they'll do after 100 days, after 200 days. And we have seen a, a president like Kibaki who came to power and within 100 days, if not less, he was able to make education affordable for all children across the economic, uh, from poor and rich households, if you may. Mm -hmm. So I associate myself with the remarks of the leader of minority who says that this is just an issue of testing the waters, playing with our psychology, so that in the end, the, before you know it, there will be another recommendation to abolish the presidential terms, term limit. Before you know it, we'll have presidents for life. Before we know it, and you know these things, we can't look at them in isolation. On this part, they are talking about uh, presidential term limit to seven years. On the other part, they are sabotaging political parties so that in the end, we'll have a president for life in a one-party state. This, if nothing else, is the surest path to anarchy, dictatorship, a country where Kenyans will never be able to express their views. If Kenyans have said that their views are to be expressed in the ballot after five years, that should be done. And at worst, if there are changes like this, they should be subject to the people who are being governed, a referendum, uh, because we also have had stories of an intention to change some of these things through the back door, through parliament, uh, in the end, it's about the people who are being governed and you cannot force yourself on people to govern them for seven years and before you know it, to govern them for life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Diana, just testing the waters, uh, is it just a statement, a statement that some say we should, you know, just not take into consideration because, well, it is Senator Chiragi's own opinion, but uh, really there's nothing much to it. Um, we would want to say that, uh, but anything that comes um, within the realm of politics, you do not want to ignore it. Um, and it's definitely a very, very misplaced um, proposal at this particular moment. Who has problems with term limits? Where is that even coming from? Mm -hmm. Why would we want, if somebody was to go for two terms, more than a decade? All our planning, the medium term plans are five years. Um, our long-term strategy, so if it's like Vision 2030 and when it was enacted, it's usually a 30-year plan. Mm -hmm. You want to be implementing that for half the period, surely. And when you think about even our school curriculum, you want a child who starts grade one all the way to university to have one leader. Um, it, it, it shrinks um, democracy and um, it, it's a very, very worrying um, concern. But overall, I just have a problem with the entire BOMAS process. Mm -hmm. who, who, wants, who says we need a constitutional moment? What is wrong with our constitution? Mm -hmm. Previously, um, the referendums that we had in 2005 and 2010, there, there was clear people's interest. Mm -hmm. At this point, the things that are being proposed, whether it is a change of term limit from five to seven years, the proposals for leader of opposition, prime minister, and so on. These are things that will take us to a referendum. Mm -hmm. At a time when we can, our pay slips cannot take any more, mm -hmm. when traders um, are unable to make any profit. So that entire process and even um, the, the things we are feeding Kenyans with, you know, you get dizzy wondering, am I in the same country? Mm -hmm. with these people who and and i think maybe that's why senator cheregay needed to wear shades because then if we <laughs> look at things straight some mm -hmm. of these things are are are, are should not be said mm -hmm. should not be said um at all so that particular process was supposed to ensure that we get the required political goodwill to maneuver the particularly the economic and governance crisis the governance crisis is not who is leader or who is not. It is that we have refused to allow institutions to do their work. Now you want to say an individual will rescue us by giving us seven years. This, this, this country is getting very, very weird proposals. What is in numbers? Five, seven. I don't know whether we need to go to, what are these people called? Um, 
tarot leaders to say seven is now perfect, we will be on a path of prosperity. No, it is totally um, unnecessary. And if you even think about uh, people who are in universities and other spaces, you want a shorter period. That way, your level of effort, ambition is higher and you deliver faster. Why give somebody more time so that um, the explanation was, oh, we must allow people one year to campaign. Why are we okaying our vices? Once you're elected, start the work immediately. If anything, let us shorten because, then like for me... Then is supposed to cure that, that there's a failure in the structures and the way the, the structure works when... Uh, you come into office and you have to take one year for litigation matters. Uh, you know, we're going to court and then the last one year of your term, you're campaigning. And but, so but the president, um, we have said the Supreme Court must hear 14 days, 14 days. We even fast tracked it so that there's a lesser period. So we, maybe we even should shrink it to three years. You know, even the right to recall is problematic because these people said we cannot recall them before two years and one year to our election, a very short period to hold them to account. And now you want us to give you more time to take your time, go around the country, continue imagining that you have a plan. Come when you're ready. Come when you're ready. And if anything, what we should be entrenching is how to hold them. Um, accountable. It's a very, very misplaced priority. Mm -hmm. I hope the media can just not cover it. We focus on the real issues. All right. Yeah. Uh, Brenda, uh, <laughs> tell us a misplaced priority or not? Very misplaced priority, and especially at a time where uh, Kenyans are on the cost of living, right. when Kenyans are on food security, when the whole world is discussing climate change, which affects the livelihoods of people affects our very exist, uh, existence, then you find someone talking about expanding term limits. I would also ask, what is wrong with our constitution? 13 years is such a, a, a short period to subject our constitution to several amendments. Mm -hmm. By the time we are done, if that is the path we take, mm -hmm. by the time we are done with this constitution, we would not recognize what we voted for in 2010. Mm -hmm. Because why do we want to, uh, to, to mutilate this constitution that we have without even... Um, making sure that it is working. There's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with it. The, the, the entire uh, problem has been implementation. We have not been able to implement uh, the, the, the two-thirds gender rule successfully. That's something we are grappling with. Then you now want to temper with, uh, with, with term limits. The excuse that uh, five years or the first two years are lost, we should move from the uh, perpetual campaign mode because once you're elected as president, you did not, uh, the moment you subjected yourself to the ballot to be elected president, the expectation is you would win mm -hmm. or you would lose. But mostly you would win. Mm -hmm. So if you win, are you caught by surprise? Don't you have a plan? What is, the, what is the importance of having a manifesto when campaigning then? I think the root problem also goes to our political parties because we have normalized having political parties that do not have any ideological basis. Mm -hmm. we, uh, if, if somebody would speak and we think, oh, okay, this is Uda speaking. Uda comes out to strongly say this is his personal, this, uh, personal um, uh, idea that mm -hmm. he is fronting. But where is he fronting it mm -hmm. at? At the national uh, dialogue committee, mm -hmm. which is supposed to bring people together. But it I would think, be within his own right as a senator, as an individual senator to... But, such an, you know. but the fact that we see him talking and we think there could be somebody else talking mm -hmm. or that could be the party position is right. what I have a problem with. We do not have parties that have ideologies because if we had a, if Uda had an ideology, we would know that, okay, automatically this is Senator Cherokee talking on his own as, Cher as Senator, but not as a Uda party. Mm -hmm. So in as much as fine now they will come and say, you know, this is his own position, uh, he's not our spokesperson and all that. I think this is really misplaced at this point. Um, it will come again because I'm sure maybe in another three months we will hear another talk of it because why are we using the National Dialogue Committee to front things that just uh, two years ago, under two years ago, we were fighting because that is what basically BBI was supposed to do. That is what, introducing new positions, introducing new uh, limits for constitutional office holders. We do not need term limit expansion at this point. Mm -hmm. Our focus should be on how do we reduce the cost of living for Kenyans. Right. Mm -hmm. And I mean, Dorcas, when you're looking at, you know, 
literally now the bigger picture, which is uh, what is happening at the National Dialogue Committee, is this a BBI reincarnate? That what would we're seeing? Some of the proposals that were made then, of course, that were rejected by uh, the Supreme Court, appear to be making their way into some of these proposals that we're seeing before that, Tim? Uh, well, um, let me take it with a pinch of salt that this is uh, the sole opinion of Senator Gerard Gay and not the position of the UDA party. As rightly said by the SG, the SG, the UDA SG, he called it superfluous and peripheral uh, and said that that was not the position of the party. Okay, um, to me, this is a very, very self-centered position by the senator. But again, we have our constitution. He's a human being. He's a Kenyan citizen. He has the right of expression. He has uh, the right to fair administrative action, at least to present that position before the bipartisan committee. But let us look at w what is the motivation of this thing. Um, is it... Is it guided by the national values and principles under our Article 10, where state officers should be patriotic to their nation? This is a senator. Uh, to me, this is not people-centric. It is not guided uh, by the goodwill for the people of Kenya. And therefore, uh, let us see what the bipartisan committee do with it. But as we know, uh, the change on the president's term limit is one of the issues that should be taken to the referendum. And therefore, it must be voted by the people. Uh, we saw Kibaki doing 10 years. He was successful. Uh, his successor, President Uhuru, did 10 years. He handed over power. So why would we change it, change it with the third president? Look at other progressive democracies, uh, say the United uh, uh, US. We saw President Obama doing four years, four years. And he ex exited the stage at the age of 55. So why are we going backwards to the, uh, whatever they said, the Moi era? Uh, we've seen what Rwanda is trying to do. Mm. Uh, they changed their constitution in 2015, and now uh, Kagame is going to almost a quarter a, a, a century. Uh, so let us see what the bipartisan committee does with it. But at the end of the day, we should not be worried. This will still come, back, come to the people for voting, and the people shall talk at that level. All right. Yes. Wanja, when you're looking generally at uh, these particular proposals, of course, that's just one of the issues uh, that have uh, you know, made headlines with regard to you know, the proposals that were before the National Dialogue Committee. And there are a number of other things, you know, the creation of the uh, office of the leader of opposition. I mean, <sighs> Prime Minister's office, this is some of the things that were during the BBI, you know, time. Do you have confidence that, you know, this particular committee, this particular process that is happening there with the bipartisan talks is really a people-driven kind of a process or is it just that of interests of the political elite? Uh, the the people-driven, the, peop the political elites and the political leaders are leaders of people. Mm. In our country, one of the things that we have really is called delegated powers, whereby mm. when you elect a member of parliament, they are speaking on your behalf. So some of the team members of, uh, of the bipartisan teams are actually elected members of parliament. Mm -hmm. uh, and probably maybe we can also say that not all of us can fit in BOMAS. Uh, that's why we have a few representatives. That said, it's quite disheartening, really, that barely a year ago we were in Bomas, serenaded by a choir of IBC uh, that was quite angelic, angelic, if you may. But since then, one year down the line, we are still in Bomas. Therefore, it means there are some major pending national conversations. And that's why since the last year, August, September, we've never really settled in terms of what became of the electoral outcome. Because you could see that even though the court, Supreme Court uh, pronounced itself, there were still issues of I respect, but I don't. I don't. And that's why we've seen uh, as Azimio and would say opposition saying Fungwa Savandio to Akikishe. Are there issues of Mwananchi at the table? I see issues of cost of living coming out strongly, especially from the side of Azimio. It might interest you to know that Barely three, four days ago, 
there was a headline in the nation where you had talked of a near fist fight between Mheshimiwa Hussein Omar and uh, Jeremiah Kioni. And the debate was, have you forgotten have you forgotten our original call in this table, which is the issue of cost of living? And the context was, you are here talking about cost of living as number one agenda item on our side, but you have gone ahead to raise the cost of fuel, I don't know by how much. Does it really make sense that what we are discussing in this table and what is happening on the ground is actually totally different? That the issue of, first of all, the cost of living cannot be addressed in that particular setting, cannot be legislated through constitutional amendment. If I'm, if, perhaps you can let me know, am I wrong? No, you're not, Zain. Uh, but you see, when the bipartisan teams, both sides, met at the table, they were said that it's up to you to decide your five issues, and uh, it's up to the other side to decide their five issues, and no side can influence the other on which is the, the issue. How we came about to be in this position as a Zimio coalition was after a number of activities, including households and public barazas that were widely covered on media. The symbol of this journey to where we are, because there is also a bit of context, you could tell that the symbol of that journey was a sufuria to symbolize high cost of living, especially coming from a context where this electoral campaign of the team that won, they galvanized uh, their issues around the hustler, a person of low economic means. Mm -hmm. But really to answer you is that uh, when all is said and done, issues of cost of living can be discussed in a table. For example, cost of living is highly affected by uh, Finance Act and our taxation systems. We know uh, our position on the issue of finance tax. Mm -hmm. So policies and laws can be discussed in a table, in a boardroom, in legislation, and that can have a direct effect on the cost of living. Uh, Kenyans uh, have expressed their, well, granted, they could feel like we are not moving as fast. Mm -hmm. They could feel like things are not going as they wish. But for me, I would say that even the political leaders are leaders of people. And in fact, it should be more important if issues, the proposal, and you know, this issue of Cheral Gay, by the way, it's just one of the many proposals mm -hmm. that was brought to that table. The women had brought their tables, their issues to the table. People with disabilities yesterday presented. Mm -hmm. Probably it's just because this issue of Cheral Gay could make a good uh, top media item or something. That's why it's becoming a dominant. And that's how now the process is becoming very political. Mm -hmm. But women, I think I saw a very beautiful proposal by women leaders in Kenya when they presented. Maybe it didn't get the same media coverage. Mm -hmm. uh, in the end... Is, uh, it, is it the proposal uh, by Kewopa that uh, uh, if we're having uh, a male governor, we should have a female deputy governor? If there is a female governor, we should have automatically a female, a male deputy governor. And that was actually in the BBI and that was one of the ways of curing the two that gender rule. Mm. You know, you said the reincarnation of BBI. You know, you can be reincarnated and reincarnate as a good person. You don't mm -hmm. have to reincarnate and become evil. <laughs> so issues like curing the gender, the gender disparity right. or lack of the gender two third was actually what, that was one of the surest proposal. All right. and in fact, it had gone up to 50%. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, those could be my okay. my submissions. Yeah. And I mean, Diana, looking at that now generally, I mean, so there are those particular issues and uh, we, we go back to the same conversation that we're having a couple of years ago. And now from a, 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 a submission that was made by the political parties liaison committee as well, it seems we cannot get out of that 2022 election rut. So they're calling for an audit of the presidential election. And this is something then, you know, takes us back to where we were and uh, what led to what we've seen early in this year uh, and, and, and later on, which was, you know, uh, people going to the streets to demand mm -hmm. a number of things, which include the high cost of living, but also the opposition saying, you know, we need to still go back to audit this particular election. So this is quite a, a shot in the arm for Azimio. I don't know. But is this something that... Uh, uh, you know, makes sense for Kenyans at this point? Um, the proposal um, to discuss um, the audit of the election is definitely much needed and probably a departure from how we handled um, the contest that was there in 2017. Right. In 2017, all the issues that were raised around the election from technology to the servers 
were set aside. And mm -hmm. instead, we got into a handshake and a process of building bridges, mm -hmm. a constitutional amendment. Mm -hmm. um, very close to the election, then we had to quickly resource the IBC, hire new directors, commissioners, and we saw what that um, did in the end. All the new commissioners who were appointed very close to the election um, are already out of office for one reason or another. So the same people who ran and um, against whom you could say there were concerns that were raised in 2017 were the ones who raised 2022. Mm -hmm. We never really audited um, our election. What does an audit of the election look like? Mm -hmm. um, previously, KPMG um, and other audit companies raise um, issues of the register. People who have engaged in election observation and uh, propose electoral reforms. Mm -hmm. But it is an important moment because whereas we say um, we are the people, we are the sovereign, you know us, those of us who feel he Kenya mm -hmm. we need to be heard. Ultimately, we agree in the design of our constitution. Um, we cede that power during the election. And what happened in parliament, um, recall, we, we have no, we do not have Kuram, IBC. Mm -hmm. the, the, there is a constituency that has no representative. Mm -hmm. And by elections have not been declared because those must be done by a commissioner. Mm -hmm. We have no IBC commissioners. Mm -hmm. That is something. I mean, IBC is being, um, the management of IBC lies with the secretariat at this point. Yes, but constitutionally, yeah. the bulk of the functions are, are, are done by the commissioner. Yes. Mm -hmm. So right now, the, you can't hold an election mm -hmm. at any level. It may be that um, it is um, Northern Kenya, mm -hmm. one constituency, but you never know. You never know what other election we need. Mm -hmm. So having that particular vacuum and discussing the limitation of boundaries, all that needs to be audited. What is happening? Are we, are we getting it right when it comes to appointment um, of commissioners mm -hmm. using political parties? Should we use professionals? Mm -hmm. um, what, what, what skills should we look out for? How do we resource the secretariat, procurement, technology, mm -hmm. oversight? Remember, um, right now, the, we've been told the server will be opened. Mm -hmm. But the report that was filed before the Supreme Court uh, when the presidential petition was being heard, there are certain details that were never availed. Mm -hmm. What happens when out of the audit, new things emerge that we will need to discuss? So, but it is a good thing that it is happening now. And I think that's one of the things that needs to be ventilated in BOMAS. They bring, then we now debate and agree how to reform or improve our, um, our IEBC. So I think the audit of the election, mm -hmm. which tends um, to affect very, very many people, and most of the times um, cannot be discussed very well in parliament. It will go back to parliament, but consensus uh, must be created and a very strong report brought um, by people who do not have direct interest. In parliament, all of them are uh, parties to the IBC, they were part of that election, so they tend to it, it, it tends to be slightly different. So mm -hmm. it helps for that to be um, discussed, and I hope that can be prioritized. And certain things, recommendation already um, are, are are agreed on, and we start addressing them. Mm -hmm. um, the the political party liaison committee, in particular, I have I'm yet to read their proposal, mm -hmm. but I'm hoping. One of the things that that dialogue committee does is urgently agrees and captures views on how we 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 feel the commissioner. Mm -hmm. um, we are out here. We are people who are out here who can run um, elections in a credible way. Mm -hmm. uh, we should not be <laughs> exposing the country to such. Right. And if it is no longer working to use political parties, mm -hmm. we and can. And I mean, the issue of the selection panel is one hot potato at this point. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and and Brenda, I mean, does it look? It appears that the fate of uh, you know these very critical functions by IBC lies uh, on the hands of uh, the bipartisan talks. Do you think that's the case? And also on the issue of the audit of the uh, last election. I'd simply say that um, an average Kenyan voter is very emotional mm -hmm. when it comes to matters of results and all. That's why. Um, in as much as we have the political parties here on committee are coming up with these
call for audit of the 2022 election. Mm. I think it's a good thing that we eventually have this audit done because in 2017 we mm -hmm. had very similar issues arising out of um, out of the then elections then. But how did we deal with it? Mm -hmm. We dealt with it via a handshake and people forgot and people forgot we had these problems we're going to 2022 with the same same mentality the naive down the line as uh, somebody has, as, as, as mentioned we were in bombers in august i uh, down the line we are still in bombers so now that our government the taxpayers money is being spent on these committees then we could as well find a solution once and for all. We do not want a situation where 2027, we are still in a panel discussing Fungua Sava. Uh, because most Kenyans would not understand what are the implications of opening this server. Right. So what if you open and you find that there were glaring um, irregularities in it and they, uh, the, 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 the results we have were not verifiable? Mm -hmm. Uh, as per the standard that the constitution has set for mm. what amounts to proper a, a proper general election mm. how then do we move do we even have systems have we thought about it how do we move from having an existing president to having an audit that reveals irregularities or maybe it does not uh, at some point maybe it could be a good thing if we have the audit let it reveal that the elections were perfect if it, were, if it was perfect, then that would probably give closure to uh, Kenyans in their, in, in their thought process. They'll think, okay, fine. Finally, we have an IBC we could trust and all that. But at this point, we do not know what we want to open ourselves to. Because if the audit results come otherwise, then um, we're left in a, in, in, in a conflict again where we do not know what how to handle that but that not say uh that, that not being enough the call for the fungua server was already has already been there and we have seen the deputy president Keshagwa, uh, talk about how the, the 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 entire election issue was put to rest i would agree with him at some point because we also need to move away from perpetual election and a perpetual electoral circle because if uh, five years, we only have five years to work. These five years is not enough as they are, as, as Senator Sheragay thinks. We cannot continue talking about elections here in, here out. But for closure's sake, let us have the audit done because it is not only an issue of uh, having the few who are represented in the uh, bipartisan talks mm -hmm. have closure, but it's a Kenyan thing. But again, what then is the purpose of the Supreme Court in setting aside, uh, in, in dealing with election petition, presidential election petitions? I would also think that uh, the whole issue of having uh, constitutional amendments that are specifically targeted to deal with specific issues that do not really affect Kenyans at this point is also misplaced because we spoke about uh, Punguza Mizigo. Punguza Mizigo initiative by uh, Dr. Eku Rokot mm -hmm. was about introducing a one-term seven-year limit, right. which was supposed to cure this whole thing of the president takes it all and we feel like for 10 years, once your person takes it, then it's 10 years and it's only those people that come from where the president comes or are associated to the president that are supposed to enjoy 10 years, then what happens to the rest of mm. our Kenyans? They remain disenfranchised for 10 or 20 years if power is supposed to be given in that particular manner. So I think our priorities as a country is, uh, is wrong. Mm -hmm. The National Dialogue Committee was very unnecessary if 2017 could be cured by a handshake without necessarily involving taxpayers in it. The issues that the dialogue committee are being subjected to use are not issues that really affect Kenyans, save for the whole issue of um, uh, cost of living, which again we agree cannot be solved uh, at BOMAS. So if we see them just talking about their interest, guarding their interest, oh, IBC selection panel, oh, we want our people represented, we want to have, um, we want to have the presidential term limits, we want to have a say in who becomes a commissioner and all that. Why do we have established leadership uh, structures in parliament to right. deal with such issues? This is an unnecessary burden on the already overtaxed, uh, already overburdened average Kenyan citizen. So 
the president at this point really should take charge oh. because it's exactly a year since he took power. Mm -hmm. We saw the scorecard, which does not look good. Most of Kenyans are giving a D or a D minor. When is he doing the State of the Nation address to address this? Because there is need for us to discuss this scorecard. What has he done right? What is he not doing right? Mm -hmm. so he should address that. This is where the focus should be. I think being at BOMAS is really unnecessary at this point. All right. Yeah. Uh, Dorcas, uh, skewed priorities at this point. Let's hear from you and then we'll take a break. All right. Um, uh, to me, I beg to differ with my colleagues here because uh, these uh, audits that we keep on saying, mm -hmm. what is it? What does it entail? Mm -hmm. Do we have a legal framework that should uh, guide on how this audit should be conducted? Uh, as far as we are concerned, we have the Constitution of Kenya, we have the Elections Act, we have the procedure on how the presidential election should be conducted. Mm. That was done. The president was, uh, was, was uh, the president elect was uh, announced. The matter was taken to the Supreme Court. It was finalized within for the 14 days. So why do we keep on going back and not respecting the, the laws that we have? What happened to the rule of law? Uh, to me, uh, I would think the best thing is to strengthen our constitutional commissions and public institutions, to have faith in them, to strengthen them, and to, to, to just believe that they can deliver for the people of Kenya. Mm -hmm. uh, would we be here with this discussion on uh, um, election audit if the Azimio coalition won the elections. Mm -hmm. So don't you think that this is a, a very, very self-centered approach mm -hmm. towards things as opposed to looking at things uh, at, at, a, at, a, at, a, at a public good perspective? Mm -hmm. So let us strengthen the IEBC commission, the other public institutions that we have, and we have faith in them that they can be able to deliver. Yes. All right. Uh, I want us to take that break now. The hashtag we're using this morning, MLive and TV, we're going to be back uh, and wind up on this uh, conversation with the panelists this morning. Stay with us. All right, welcome back to the program. You are watching AM Live on our last stretch here of uh, this conversation this morning. And still, right before the National Dialogue Committee is a proposal, and uh, I have that proposal uh, that was submitted, memorandum by the political parties uh, liaison committee. I'm trying to find uh, where they're talking about the issue of uh, more counties, but that's one of the proposals that has actually uh, come out before uh, the committee, adding more counties. Do we need that, Wanja? Do we need more counties? Uh, we already have 47 counties. Kenyans are reeling under, you know, heavy taxation, really, and high cost of living inflation rate is quite high. Uh, would, what would this mean for Kenyans? Uh, the issue of adding more counties uh, is an issue that has been presented. Uh, and I really see it in the context of the delimitation of boundaries. Mm -hmm. Because uh, delimitation could increase or decrease uh, the number of uh, units of representation mm -hmm. uh, but these counties uh, in a way they decentralized resources to machinani people but it could also be uh, devolution of corruption devolution of uh, poor leadership devolution of uh, lack of effective use of national resources uh, but sometimes I do try to resonate with some of the with some of these de debates. Mm -hmm. Take an issue that we have been pushing quite a bit, the issue of one, one, one shilling, one vote. There has been debates mm -hmm. that there are some people in this country who are more, but they are not well represented. Mm -hmm. And you can sort of try to hear their debates. I have one constituency, I have 400,000 uh, 400, people, mm -hmm. my friend, it seems like Fafi is the example in that debate. Fafi has 8,000 voters, for example. Mm -hmm. Are we really the same? But the issue of uh, increase in terms of counties. So how are, we, how are we measuring the county to be? Is it in terms of land mass? Is this in terms of the Wananchi to be represented? Mm -hmm. Is it lack of resources? What exactly is uh, informing this increase in number of counties? Mm -hmm. But for me, when it comes to issues of delimitation of constituencies, because uh, that is where the debate, if we tie it to BBI, was at, uh, for me, I 
look at it in terms of fairness and in terms of representation of the people and in terms of equality of the vote. Mm -hmm. Where some people argue why should a, ch a child, for example, in a county like Kiambu, get a bursary of 2,000 shillings while a child somewhere else is getting a bursary of 40,000 mm -hmm. shillings. Aren't all children in Kenya equal? So that is for me an issue to do with uh, one man, one shilling, one vote. Mm -hmm. is an issue to do with the representation of the people and equity of distribution of national resources. Mm -hmm. If those are the debates, there has been now issues of marginalization, people who come from regions where they have been traditionally marginalized from way back. But is it increase of counties in terms of names or is it increase of effectiveness, mm -hmm. increase of prudence of resources? Mm -hmm. uh, that is, you know, that's where all this is going. Uh, yeah. And, and suddenly you, you believe this is not the conversation we should be having right now. If you are saying that a child who receives 2,000 shillings mm -hmm. is disadvantaged vis-a-vis -vis a child who receives uh, 30,000 shillings by virtue of... You see, counties are just names. But Nairobi is more populous because it has 17 constituencies, while Lamu has two constituencies. How are those resources distributed? This debate. So there should be a formula framework that would see this equitable share of revenue across. Is an issue um, of equity. Is an issue of the equality of the vote. Okay. Is a constituency like Roiro that has four thousand residents, the same as a constituency like Garissa, which I believe has around forty thousand mm -hmm. residents. Are they really the same? Mm -hmm. Is it fair to give them the same number of resources? Mm -hmm. Are we looking at people? Are we looking at land mass? Are we looking at historical marginalization? Uh, this has been an... In the end, it's really about the people. Mm -hmm. Because even if Nakuru, which is one of the counties that is proposed to be increased, if, if Nakuru, for example, maybe the, the question should be, is it an issue of Nakuru being divided into two? Or is it equity, equitable distribution of resources such that a woman in Nakuru or a woman in Tiati constituency, because mm -hmm. that one of the proposals is from the MP of Tiati, mm -hmm. is it that we want the, that child to have the same opportunity as a child somewhere in, in Garissa? Yeah. The debate of increase of boundaries of constituencies or counties is really a debate of equity and equality of division of the national cake, mm -hmm. or is it the national galley? Uh, but some people have also argued we do more, we are taxed more, but we don't get more. Mm -hmm. uh, but have we even accessed the work of these counties. Just the other day, they had a devolution conference, mm -hmm. and the debates were just merely debates of leaders talking among each other. And I was telling them, why can't you invite the one you've been serving for the last decade? Because for us to know if devolution is working, it is not you marking your own exams. Because really, the devolution conference was them talking among each other. Mm -hmm. We can even, now that we are auditing things, we can also audit these counties. Have they, are they fit for purpose? Have they served the people? Mm -hmm. What is the difference in the quality of life of a child before in, in, in a particular place vis-a-vis uh, -vis now? Some people have argued, was it a good idea to devolve health? Mm -hmm. So instead of uh, adding counties, we can ask, are there some functions that were devolved that maybe it wasn't a good idea? All right. Me, for me, I see reorganizing more of the bigger picture than adding just names. And, yeah. as, as counties, yeah. right. Diana, your thoughts? Um... The issue of um, delimitation and um, of constituencies and counties definitely is something that is anchored in the Constitution. And um, we've come to the moment when we must reflect um, whether we need to look at the parameters that mm -hmm. were used in um, delimiting the current boundaries that we have. Mm -hmm. I think initially um, counties were supposed to, because this is a unit of government, um, unlike as a, a constituency. So I did, I did not expect that we would be delimiting um, county boundaries because that was supposed to be a very, very different process. But mm -hmm. I see that has been um, opened up, um, that certain counties are extremely big. Mm -hmm. um, that shouldn't be the worry because when you look at the proposals that have been made over the years by the Commission on Revenue Allocation, Counties with significant uh, population, land mass, all that is uh, put into consideration when we are doing revenue allocation. Mm -hmm. 
But like has been stated, I think the, the biggest problem is ensuring that whichever unit of government you have, you're able to deliver um, equitable or equal services mm -hmm. to everybody. It is not so much that there will be the same um, money because we are not, Kenyans are not equal and we have not been equal. Mm -hmm. People have been significantly marginalized. Most of the areas that have very, very high population, it's because those people cannot live and survive in certain hardship areas. Those areas have significant development of infrastructure from um, roads to hospitals. Um, there was a time there was an analysis um, when the, was it the Kenya Defense Forces was constructing a referral hospital here in Westland, mm -hmm. that if you calculate within a, a 50 or even kilometer radius, mm -hmm. there are four referral mm -hmm. hospitals. Whereas other people will calculate a 200 kilometer radius before they get a level five or level four mm -hmm. hospital. Right. So that must be the conversation that we must have. Mm -hmm. And as we do this, we must increasingly remember that we are a devolved system of government and we must continue to strengthen devolution and decentralization. Mm -hmm. I worry very much. Um, yesterday, the president want, w launched a project around primary health care. The county health promoters. Promoters. Right something that honestly is a devolved function. Mm -hmm. And um, the continued statement by the president that if this is working, I want to support you. That is not a devolved system of government. Devolve the resources that you are, you are, you are, you are, you are donating uh, in a charitable way mm -hmm. to the counties. Counties have always had significantly lower resources in every budget. All right. 85% of the resources are still at the national level, mm -hmm. yet the functions in Schedule 4 show that we should almost be getting to 40% mm -hmm. resource allocation at the county level. Mm -hmm. I do agree that accountability must take place at the national and county level. But 10 years into devolution, mm -hmm. things have changed. Things have significantly changed. Every single county in this country has stomach. Every single county in this country, comparing uh, with 2012-2013, has a two-story building. Things have changed. Everywhere you go, you will get um, a decent hotel. So mm -hmm. there is a sense of development that right. is happening at that level that we must continue nurturing. Mm -hmm. The center is still, still wants to hold too much power, mm -hmm. and I think that must be at the center of discussing mm -hmm. delimitation and further decentralization mm -hmm. um, of resources. Sometimes I don't think we, we need to delimit so that we give people more resources mm -hmm. based on their population. Mm -hmm. We just rework the formula that is currently um, used by the Commission on Revenue Allocation. Mm -hmm. If we are even to apply the proposals um, and the ruling of the court that right. we must have recent, the most recent audit, we must run this country the same way as good businesses do. That by next year, when we are going for the budget making process, we must have the full audit of this year and use that particular budget to determine what resources go to um, counties and so on. We will increase um, the amount of money that is going to different uh, population right. while not losing sight um, of the areas that we must apply mm -hmm. equitable um, revenue allocation. Indeed. And, and I've actually found that document, that memorandum to the dialogue committee. It came from uh, the Sabaot community, who also appeared yesterday, and they're saying the aim of the additional counties is to address marginalization and bring services closer to the people in realization to the objectives of uh, the devolution. Uh, this should only be applied, they're saying, however, just to counties where minority indigenous communities. Um, are domiciled in counties that they don't share historical and cultu cultural ties with the larger communities, hence being marginalized. And that's why they're proposing a creation of something called the Mount Elgon County that will am amalgamate Mount Elgon, Saboti, and the, and the best constituencies. And of course, they've given a map 
or retain Mount Elgon constituency as an independent county at that point. But that's just basically their proposal in terms of uh, that issue of increasing counties. Brenda. Um, I would start by saying that the government's uh, governance principle that funding should follow functions is what should be the guiding um, principle to how we deal with our counties or how we deal with, our, with, with devolution. Mm -hmm. The fact that uh, health was devolved, by we, uh, which I think was a goof, health was such an important function. Not that the rest are not important, but at this point I really think health, we were not ready to devolve health and that's why we see most of the counties grappling with, with the health situation. Mm -hmm. Every other time it's doctors are, are on strike, health workers have not been paid, the state of our hospitals, had, uh, most of our hosp public hospitals are in deplorable states and all that. So when we talk about increasing more counties, mm -hmm. I'll just go back to can we afford more governors? Mm -hmm. Can we afford the staff that come with those counties? Have we seen counties actually work and deliver for us to say, okay, I think this would be better. It would be better if uh, my county mm -hmm. uh, is, is divided into two so that the, uh, the services can reach more people. Because again, the, there's the whole issue of we have seen county governments, we've seen um, governors mm -hmm. being used or, or rather being the most corrupt at this point. Mm -hmm. Just the other day we saw Sierra County being accused of spending there's an 100 million that is missing from our payment of salaries right. that cannot be explained. So can we deal with the issues that we have with counties currently before we think of creating new ones? Because if we create new ones yet we devolved corruption, we devolved poor governance then what else are we, like, uh, what more burden are we subjecting Kenyans to at this point? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. And Dorcas, your view as well? Um, I, I think this is a good move by the Sabaoth community mm -hmm. uh, to advocate for their own county. Yeah. Um, the Sabaoth community are part and parcel of uh, people or citizens of this republic. Mm -hmm. um, they are advocating that they want a county, uh, their own county, hived from the Bungoma and the, the Transoya County. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's a good move. This is the forum that they can be had. And um, uh, as we know, what was the object of, of, of having, the, of having the, the county governments or the objects of devolution? Mm -hmm. It is devolving a service to the Wanjiko down there at the Mashinani. So... Um, this is a it's a it's a it's a it's a good move mm -hmm. um if at all they they feel that they have been marginalized for these years yeah uh this is a uh, it's, it's a it's a it's a better way of advocating for their for their own rights so um we are being told that there's no budget for this there is no resources for this but we see heavy budgets being allocated to individual offices mm -hmm. like state house so why can't we also have these people feel that they have their own county mm -hmm. uh, they can govern themselves they can you know they can advocate and uh, go on with their cultures at that level yeah at mount elgon so it's a good right. move i support that and um let's see whether they will be heard okay yeah maybe. Right. and and because we're almost out of time i just want to get quick thoughts on uh what you make of uh renson ingonga who has just been sworn in at state house that happened yesterday he now takes over as the new director of public prosecutions and of course i uh, remember all the criticism that did fall on the duty of uh Nurdin had you back then. So this is quite a big issue as well as uh, he takes over as the third DPP since the promulgation of the constitution after Kiriako Tobiko. We had uh, Nurdin Haji and now Ngonga uh, being the third DPP of the country. And of course, yesterday in that swearing in, the president says, uh, you're going to face criticism. You will hear calls for greater accountability and transparency in your office decision making. But uh, this is part and parcel of the public service and state office. And uh, he says that uh, I, I, I trust that you will understand that in our vibrant democracy, Kenyans will deserve and demand to receive a higher standard of service from those they choose and have entrusted you with the high office. And of course, uh, he takes over from uh, the president on the same 
Let me just begin with you, Dorcas, as we move forward. Just less than a minute. Uh, the new DPP, what do you, uh, do you, does it inspire confidence? And you know in that profession, so yes, the, the criminal justice system, um, good move. I get perhaps we, you know, we're not here to judge his uh, tenure because he's not yet done anything yet. But uh, perhaps we, what do you look forward to? Uh, the new DPP is actually an insider. He was mm -hmm. taken uh, inside from the inside. He's not an outsider. Mm -hmm. um, he's a... Uh, we we hope yeah. that he was picked on merit yeah. uh, from uh, 15 applicants yes from the 15 applicants yeah. um uh, actually we just learned he was the head of the um, eastern region yeah. uh, in the office of the dpp uh we we look forward mm -hmm. to seeing uh, how he deals with matters and we hope that he will inspire confidence uh, uh, uh to the people of kenya uh, as opposed to his predecessor, mm -hmm. who towards the final end really withdrew a lot of uh, uh, serious cases against politicians. Mm -hmm. So uh, we wish him well, uh, but we hope that he will inspire confidence and be governed by the rule of law. Mm -hmm. and, and indeed, Brenda, there has been an, in, um, an integrity uh, issue with the DPP's office uh, since the tenure of the last office holder. Uh, what do you think uh, perhaps he needs to do the new DPP? Uh, just as Dokas has said, um, he comes in at a point when Kenyan's faith in the criminal justice system or justice system generally is really low. So he has his work cut out. The first thing that he should do is let him see, let, let, let him actually work and let him be seen to be working also. Because um, when Kenyans have this perception, the public perception is there are no prosecutions that would take place because it's against a prominent person mm -hmm. or these charges are, uh, the DPP basically is supposed to okay mm -hmm. prosecutions because most of the time the courts have failed to to hear these matters because the DPP did not give clearance or even when the DPP gave clearance there was no sufficient evidence and we see our uh, cases for failing on very flim flimsy reasons so the new DPP has his work cut out let him try and inspire confidence on the common one issue that there is actually a criminal justice system that is going to work for this country mm -hmm. we started on a wrong footing uh, because we saw immediately uh, the president took over withdrawal of cases or cases just being dismissed for lack of evidence and all that. Mm -hmm. Let him, let that not be a norm. Let him try to be different. Let us not have another haji. Yeah. All right. And we are seeing new, new ex, new cases against ex-governors right now coming up, corruption cases, perhaps. Now this will fall perhaps under uh, the DPP's uh, uh, mandate as well, Diana. Um, what do you look forward to? Um, Zainab, you know, for, for me and for us who are part of the National Integrity Alliance um, that um, raised serious concerns of leadership and integrity with mm -hmm. the former DPP um, and now NIS Director Nudin Haji, mm -hmm. we expect that the new DPP comes in and restores dignity to that office. Mm -hmm. That office was um, lacked a lot of um, dignity, integrity. We were not sure what was happening mm -hmm. um, anymore. And unfortunately, during this period when we've not had a DPP, I think yesterday you saw the chief magistrate in charge of an anti-corruption court mm -hmm. that has been handling the Arol and Kimwarel cases, getting very frustrated by the conduct mm -hmm. of the prosecutor in that particular matter. Mm -hmm. So the DPP must uh, be seen and urgently. We, we have a problem of corruption. We hope to um, get all thieves of public money in jail. We hope to see assets recovered. Mm -hmm. This is the one office that ought to work with the Ethics and Anti-Corruption mm -hmm. Commission and IEBC. Um, in 2013 through to 2017, there was a process of them discussing how we finally give effect mm -hmm. to the leadership and integrity chapter. Right. I am hoping he will come and uh, kickstart that. I am also happy that he's an insider because in the course of interacting with prosecutors in this country, they say the internal um, discipline had been destabilized completely. 
So as an insider who has served for long, yeah. and um, I'm sure when you serve in an institution for long, I am an activist. I am proudly activist. I will defend activist. I am hoping he will remember everything that the, the, the lowest prosecutor to the highest mm -hmm. goes through, and he will restore the needed order. Definitely, as he settles in, we wish him well, because yeah. um, they are definitely people who are his bosses previously that he now um, has to oversee. Right. I laud the, the, the president for remembering we are a democracy and we will be demanding high accountability. Indeed. We'll be writing to the DPP with our expectations. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Wanja, you have the last word. Uh, all right. Uh, congratulations to him for this task. Certainly, it's a, a big task, considering that uh, he works in a context that is uh, political, yeah. where else some people say that sometimes politics is stronger than the rule of law. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what they say. Uh, just, you know, a, a few days ago, I had the Prime Cabinet Secretary saying that President Akirudi Hapanchini, kazi yake ya kwanza itakuwa kuapisha mtoto wetu. He was speaking with the people, I believe in, from his community. Uh, then I started asking, okay, are we talking about a person from a certain mtoto wao, or are we talking about a DPP? Uh -huh. So certainly, I really hope that he'll be able to just do his job without those tribal kind of, um, sp you know, being seen as a particular child of a particular community. Right. I've been trying to use this phrase, mambo ni matatu, on a light note, but for me, I'll say mambo ni matano. <laughs> I see dignity in that office as a key issue. Right. I see consistency okay. so that it doesn't look like he's treating some people better than others. I All see right. fairness. I see being judicious. Mm -hmm. And I just see, you know, we talk about political hygiene. I also hope to see prosecution and DPP hygiene mm -hmm. where Kenyans have faith in some of these uh, institutions. And away from uh, what many would term as uh, political influence. Away from political in, in influence. In his own mandate. Yes. All right. Thank you, Wanja Maina, National Chairperson, Jubilee Party, PWD's League, Diana Kishengo, National Coordinator, Tisa, Brenda Ongalo, Advocate of the High Court, and Dorka Smoy, Constitutional and Environmental Advocate as well. Thank you so much, ladies, for joining us this morning. I'm just going to leave it at uh, this uh, caricature here that was uh, within the Daily Nation, of course, Nikuwasha uh, Kibiriti. And, you know, <laughs> let's see if he's going to light the fire on the issue of the term limits there. But uh, that's the conversation we were having this morning. We wind up on that note. My name is Enabi Smile. Your world is coming up shortly with Winnie Lubembe. Have yourself a good Tuesday morning and a great day ahead.